I'm going to give you the three fail-proof stops and starts if you want a deeper connection with your spouse. Join me so you can start connecting now. I have spent thousands of hours on coaching calls, and the number one thing couples want is deeper connection. And without fail, they are all making these three mistakes. When they stop making them and they start doing the three things I teach them to do, they get deeper connection than they ever imagined was possible. I'm Julia Woods, coach, trainer, and founder of Beautiful Outcome, a coaching company committed to helping couples create communication that helps them build their dream life and marriage. Let's look at the first stop and start. First, stop needing to be right and start being neutral. As humans, we love to be right. We love being right more than anything else. And our need to be right brings us to walk through great suffering. If you want to be right, welcome to loneliness. Being right is being positioned on what it is that you think you know. But once you begin to understand the human survival system, the truth is we're only taking in at 1% at best of what's actually happening. It's like looking at the ocean through a tiny pinhole. We really don't know. We only know what we think we know. Is the tiny bit of information you have worth the loneliness you feel? If you can stop being right, you can start being neutral. Neutral is the ability to be open-minded to possibilities. It's open to the perspectives, the possible perspective of it's not right, it's not wrong, it's just different. When we first got married, Jeff had, my husband had this desire to, to take a daily nap and he asked me what I thought about it. And I thought I knew that that's just wrong. I thought I was right that naps are what lazy people do. Sorry if you're a nap taker and sorry to my husband. Naps wasn't something that I considered normal. It wasn't a part of my life growing up. My husband had done it every day in high school. Because it wasn't normal to me and I thought that I knew that naps were wrong, I shamed and criticized him. I drove a wedge between us. I wasn't going to have a husband that napped. It's been 32 years since then, and I'm now neutral about naps. I got off of being positioned that naps were bad, wrong, or unacceptable. Now naps are just naps. If you want one, take one. If you need one, take one. It isn't a big deal. I believe if I had been neutral in the beginning, my husband would have taken a few naps here and there, and we would have stayed connected. By stopping my need to be right and choosing to be neutral, it allowed us to get connected over something that was normal to him. The second stop and start is stop blaming and start taking responsibility. As humans, the moment something isn't going the way we want it to go, we look for someone or something to blame. This is automatic in our DNA. Blame is pointing one finger at your spouse while four fingers are pointing back at you. We blame so we can avoid looking at us. I create a shiny object over there so that you don't notice anything is going on over here. We literally make our spouse the bad guy. It's so loving. No, one, no wonder we feel disconnected. We just made our spouse the sacrificial lamb. If you want connection, stop blaming and start taking responsibility. Reality is no one's to blame. Both people to contributed to how things are turning out. Each spouse made choices. They had attitudes, tones. They chose what to say. They chose what not to say. They chose what to do, what not to do, what they noticed and hoped that they could get by with. Sometimes Their choice was to not make a choice, which is still a choice. For years, I blamed my husband for our lack of savings. I focused on the things he did that seemed frivolous with money. We spent many nights and weekends disconnected over the choices I made to be mad at him for what he was doing. 
I couldn't see that I also did frivolous things. Mine just looked better in my eyes. He would overspend on clothing and that seemed terrible. But my overspending on gifts for the kids seemed like no big deal to me. When I stopped pointing the finger at him and started taking responsibility, I learned that we were both contributing to our lack of savings. We both started focusing on ourselves and our choices with money. We started feeling connected and began partnering to save money. We now see each other as equally responsible for bringing about our financial goals. The third stop and start is stop criticizing and start being curious. The final big mistake I see couples, including my husband and I making, that creates disconnection is criticizing. It is a unique version of thinking we are right and blaming our spouse. If I think there's a right way that things should be done, I will criticize someone doing it a different way. This occurs in things like how the house is cared for, how the children are fed, dressed, or put to bed, taught to obey, how money is handled, how holiday traditions are kept, and all the other things that we make decisions about together in a marriage. When we are insecure about ourselves, we will criticize others. When we think we're supposed to be perfect, we criticize ourselves, and that is the same way we criticize others. Criticizing causes our spouse to feel small, unimportant, embarrassed, and belittled. It creates significant disconnection. If you want connection, you need to stop criticizing and start being curious. Our spouse has a unique way of seeing the world. It's a big part of why we married each other. If we will get curious about their approach, we can connect as we learn more about them and discover things about ourselves. My husband has a very different approach to his pace than I do. For years, I criticized his pace. I'm a little fast paced, he's a little slower paced. If I would tell him things like, if he would focus, then he could go faster. I created a considerable amount of disconnection between us. Then I started applying the perspective of, it's not right, it's not wrong, it's just different. I got curious about his pace. I saw how his slower pace helped him make less mistakes than I do. I noticed how his slower pace helped him often outlast me and how he noticed things I often overlooked. The more I got curious about the prices and benefits of each of our pace, I grew to respect his. We began having connecting conversations about it and we each discovered we respect aspects of each other's pace. We began developing our own pace based on our discoveries that we were learning from each other. When I stopped needing to be right, blaming and criticizing, and I started being neutral, taking responsibility, and getting curious, the more connected my husband and I became. Now, which of those stops and starts do you realize that you want to implement? Would you share in the comments below? I have a free gift for you called 100 Deeper Connection Prompts and Ideas. If you would like a copy, simply click the link underneath this video and check out the description. Would you like and subscribe and let me know if you and your spouse have a different differing pace? See you next week. Hey hon. Yeah. What do you think created the most disconnection for us? Um, our need to be right, criticizing each other, or blaming each other. I think I need to be right. I agree.